Indifference curves. Before we talk about indifference curves, let's take a look at what ISO lines are. You've probably seen a weather map like this before. This just depicts the temperature at different places in North America. The bold black lines that you see here are simply examples of ISO lines. Consider for example the line labeled 80. The places that lie on this particular line have a temperature of precisely 80 degrees Fahrenheit. This line labeled 80 is an example of an ISO line. So what precisely is an ISO line? Well, an ISO line is just a line that connects points of equal value of some particular attribute. So in the example that we just saw, the attribute of concern was temperature. So in the case of temperature, there's actually a special name for the ISO line. It's called an isotherm. The prefix ISO is from the Greek for equal, and the suffix therm is from the Greek for heat. Hence, isotherms are lines which connect places on the map which are of equal heat or equal temperature. So let's look at another example of an isotherm. Let's look at the line labeled 85. The places that lie on this particular line have a temperature of precisely 85 degrees. And the places that lie between the two isotherms labeled 80 and 85, that's the dark orange area, have a temperature of between 80 and 85 degrees. So why did we just spend the last couple of minutes talking about the weather? Well, it turns out that ISO lines actually feature quite prominently in economics. So the purpose of talking about ISO terms was just to give you an example of ISO lines that you're probably familiar with. In fact, we've actually already secretly seen one example of an ISO line. And this was the budget line. The budget line is an ISO line. In particular, it's an ISO cost line. That is to say, it is a line that connects bundles on our graph that are of equal costs. And in the case of the budget line, it connects bundles that each cost $20. That's Chris's income. So just like an isotherm was a line that connected points on the map that were of equal temperature, likewise, the budget line is an ISO cost line. In particular, it is a line that connects bundles on our graph that cost an equal amount, namely the consumer's income, and in this case, that's $20. And of course, the budget line is not the only ISO cost line. If we had liked, we could have drawn and labeled several more ISO cost lines. So for example, this pink line here is also an ISO cost line. It is the $18 ISO cost line. It connects bundles that cost $18. How do I know that this is the $18 ISO cost line? Well, it's actually quite simple because it runs through the point 18 apples, 0 bananas. And we know that this bundle costs precisely $18. Similarly, we could have drawn another ISO cost line, the red line here. And this is the $16 ISO cost line because it runs through the bundle 16 apples, 0 bananas. But in general, we are not going to care too much about ISO cost lines other than the budget line itself. So we don't care about the $16 ISO cost line. We are also not going to care too much about the $18 ISO cost line. The only ISO cost line that we'll care about is the budget line. This is the line where the consumer is spending all of his money. Now, if the budget line were the only example of an ISO line in economics, I wouldn't have bothered talking about ISO lines at all. The real payoff from our discussion of ISO lines comes when we talk about indifference curves. It turns out that indifference curves are also examples of ISO lines. In particular, they are what I would call ISO preference lines. Let's now take a look at what indifference curves are. So this is our usual graph. And as we just said, indifference curves are also ISO preference lines. So a typical example of an indifference curve is going to be something like this. This is an indifference curve that I've labeled IX. It consists of precisely those bundles which have a preference level of X. So if I pick any two bundles on this particular indifference curve, for example, this green bundle and this red bundle, the two of them are going to have a preference level of X. So another way of saying that these two bundles share the same preference level is to say that Chris equally prefers the two of them. And in still other words, we can say that Chris is indifferent between the green and red bundles. And this is where the name indifference curve was derived. But now you're probably wondering, where do indifference curves come from? Well, let's take a look at the example of preference that we saw from the last video. This preference was very simple and could be fully described in words as maximize the number of fruit. Now what we are going to do is to try to depict this preference on our graph by constructing the indifference curves that correspond to this preference. Let's pick any one bundle at random, say the bundle 10 apples, 1.5 bananas. Now our question is, what does the indifference curve that runs through this particular bundle look like? Well recall that an indifference curve is just an ISO preference line. That is to say, it consists of those bundles that are equally preferred to the red bundle. 
In other words, the indifference curve that runs through this bundle consists of precisely those bundles that Chris is indifferent about when compared to the red bundle. Let us now consider an example of a bundle that lies on the same indifference curve. Suppose we started off at the red bundle. We gave Chris one additional apple, but took away from him one banana. Then he'll land up on the purple bundle, and this bundle is the bundle 11 apples and 0.5 banana. So notice that since all Chris cares about is his total number of fruit, it must be the case that he's equally happy about being on the red bundle or on the purple bundle. So in other words, he's indifferent between the red bundle and the purple bundle. And hence, the purple bundle is going to be on the same indifference curve as the red bundle. Now what's another example of a bundle that's also on the same indifference curve? Suppose we started off again at the red bundle. We gave Chris one additional banana, but took away from him one apple, so that he was on this new blue bundle, where he has nine apples and 2.5 bananas. So we can again make the same argument. Since Chris cares only about his total number of fruit, if you give him one more banana, but take away from him one apple, he's exactly as happy as he was before. That is to say, he's indifferent about being on the blue bundle or on the red bundle. And hence, the blue bundle is on the same indifference curve as the red bundle. So what we can conclude is that the red bundle, the purple bundle, and the blue bundle all lie on the same indifference curve. So if we simply keep repeating this exercise, giving Chris an additional banana, taking away from him an apple, or giving him an additional apple and taking away from him a banana, what we'll trace out is this whole sequence of yellow bundles. And these are all going to lie on the exact same indifference curve. That is to say, Chris is indifferent between any two bundles on this indifference curve. So what we did was to start with the red bundle, and then we asked, what does the indifference curve which runs through this bundle look like? We then proceeded to construct just such an indifference curve. Let's now look at one more example of how an indifference curve is constructed. Let's just pick any point at random, say the yellow bundle here. This is the bundle 5 apples and 3 bananas. Again, we can ask, what does the indifference curve that runs through this bundle look like? Well, let's see. Starting from the yellow bundle, suppose we give Chris one apple and take away from him one banana. Then we'll be ending up on the green bundle. And again, just like argued before, this green bundle will be just as good as the yellow bundle. So we know that this green bundle is going to lie on the indifference curve that runs through the yellow bundle. Similarly, if we start again at the yellow bundle, give Chris one extra banana, take away from him one apple, we'll end up at the blue bundle. And again, this bundle will also be on the same indifference curve. And so if we keep repeating this exercise, we'll get a whole bunch of bundles that lie on the same straight downward sloping line. And this is precisely the indifference curve that runs through the yellow bundle. So we started off with the yellow bundle. We asked, what's the indifference curve that runs through this bundle? We then proceeded to construct it. It's just a straight downward sloping red line shown here. I'm now going to go ahead and label the first indifference curve IX. And now if I pick any two bundles on the indifference curve IX, I can say that they have the same preference level. Or in other words, Chris is indifferent between these two bundles. He equally prefers one to the other. I could also assign to them a preference level of X. I could say that every bundle that lies on this particular indifference curve has a preference level of X. Similarly, I can go ahead and label the second indifference curve as IY. And again, I can pick any two bundles. And I can say that these two bundles have the same preference level. They have a preference level of Y. That is to say, Chris equally prefers one to the other. Or in other words, he's indifferent between the two of them. And now we might ask, which indifference curve does Chris prefer? Or in other words, given a bundle on each indifference curve, which bundle does Chris prefer? It's probably not difficult to figure out that he's going to prefer the white bundle to the yellow bundle. More generally, Chris is going to prefer any bundle on the indifference curve IX to any bundle on the indifference curve IY. So what we've just done is to construct two indifference curves that correspond to the same single preference. If we had like, we could easily have constructed several more indifference curves. For example, like so. These indifference curves all correspond to the same preference. Let's end this video by noting that northeast is the direction of increasing preferredness. That is to say, Chris strictly prefers being on an indifference curve that is as far to the northeast as possible. In general, this is going to be true so long as the preference of concern is one that satisfies the rule, more is better.